Okay. Um, yeah, thanks for at least some people attending this talk, um, even though I think it's quite an important one. And uh, the person I that my job is to introduce right now, yeah, I don't even know what to say, actually. Um, he's a not only a colleague, but also a friend. And uh, for me, he is basically the reason why I stand here today, because he recruited me. Um, <laughs> And he's the reason that I'm at Sandstorm, and he's the really the heart and soul of our company and an inspiration for me and for all of us, and also for the NEOS community. And it's his birthday today, so be super kind to him and listen to his words. Tobias Gruber. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. In the other track there is the shopware talk, right? Okay. I want to talk about open source today. Now, this is an open source conference. Um, NEOS is an open source system, Flow as well. Um, you all know that. That's why you're here. So that's no big news to you. Um, I think I can skip that. You've heard that often. Enough now. I'm a Sandstormer and a NEOS team member. Come in, have a seat. Okay, um, open source. Who has been to a sprint for an open source project? Okay, a few of you. Um, who knows if your company is sponsoring some open source project? Okay. Um, and who has contributed to an open source project, for example, in GitHub or in some other way? Okay, some of you? Cool. Um, as you probably all know, open source is ubiquitous in web agencies today, right? It's, it's everywhere. There's, I mean, I could fill this slide with hundreds and hundreds of logos of um, open source systems, of foundations that support open source. You probably know some of those, right? Um, there's some on there I don't even know, but it, it, it really doesn't matter. It's just an illustration of how much variety there is today. And um, in, in software development, it's really it's the big thing. Um, that's it's a thing that's changing in industry. Um, for me, the the most interesting one at the moment is, is probably that one, Microsoft, um, with their embrace of open source and Linux on Azure, um, and they're opening up their ecosystem on GitHub and um, really going the open source way and saying, "Hey, we are a big money-making corporation, and open source is is a way to go." And it drives our business model as well. And of course, um, you're, you're also aware that there are big foundations out there that host a lot of open source projects, um, like the Free Software Foundation, the Linux Foundation, the Apache Foundation, um, and of course, the NEOS Foundation. Okay. You heard me talk about that at the keynote today. Um, I wanted to pull out one more uh, slide to give a little perspective about um, open source projects. So the Linux Foundation pulled together um, the 30 biggest open source projects. And the metrics they choose for that is um, number of commits, um, pull requests and issues, and the bubble size um, is the number of contributors. So um, there's the, you know, not a big surprise. The biggest open source project there is is the Linux kernel um, that has something like 4,000 authors contributing. Um, and then the, the next big ones are Homebrew, uh, definitely typed in Kubernetes. Um, so most of those you've, you've probably heard, right? Angular. Um, Vue, JS, .NET. Um, 
So in, in software, it's really nothing new, right? And it's not surprising. And sometimes we even forget that so much of the software we're using in the, in the agencies is actually open source. Um, at Sandstorm, the only software we're really using is open source software. And that starts with uh, operating systems we use on the service we operate, um, the databases we use, the uh, programming languages we use, the frameworks, and so on and so on, everything is open source and of course um, for us as an as an agency um, I'm asking myself okay what you know this open source thing what's in it for me why 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 does it make sense to use it and there's there's a really obvious thing right what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you're thinking okay what's the, what's the benefit of using open source Okay, it's free, right? You don't have to pay for anything. You just go to the website, you download the software, or you, you know, do Composer or something, or I'm not a developer, so, you know, you just install it, you download it, you don't have to pay anything, um, and if you don't like it, you throw it away and take something else. Um, but when you think about stuff that's free, most of us think, wait a minute, isn't there a catch somewhere? Like, there's no, no such thing as a free lunch, right? So, isn't there a drawback? What, why is someone offering something for free um, that they spend time making, that they maybe spend money on? Why would they do that? And so there's a lot of, um, let's say, reservations out there, um, things that people consider problematic when using open source in, in big projects, in big corporations, um, in you know, for work, for professional um, software development. All right. So let's let's have a look at those a little bit, and then afterwards um, we're going to look at the upsides. So um, one of the big issues that's often mentioned when we look at open source software is, well, when I have a problem. Who can I call, right? It's not that we have a uh, a hotline on the Neos IO website where you can just say, "All right, I have a I have a big emergency bug. Neos team, come in and help." That that's not how it works, right? But that's something that agencies and companies sometimes want. They want to have the feeling that if something broke down with their services, their websites, their systems, they can call someone who's capable to help them fix their problem. So, do you think that's the reality that open source systems have bad support? Yeah, not really, right? When I look at NEOS, and that's you know the, the best insight I have, um, it works differently, but that's, that's really it. I wouldn't say it's bad, better or worse. It's very different. There's not a hotline I can call or you know I don't have a ticket system where I have an SLA attached and you know within two hours I'll get a response or something like that. Um, but I have something called Slack where I can reach people, I have discuss where I can post problems. And if I really want to rely on an SLA, I always have the option to go to a, another agency or a professional services firm to buy that level of support. Um, if I need it, right? I can go to companies that provide hosting, for example, um, and buy an SLA with that hosting, and they are so, let's say, um, well equipped with their knowledge of the system that they even provide support for open source systems. And then there's other professional services companies where, you know, that feel comfortable providing that level of service. It's just not the same vendor, right? So it's just different. Another problem that's often stated uh, is liability. Some people say, if something breaks down because of an error in th that open source system, there's no one I can sue, there's no way to get my money back that I might lose, right? And we can all think of um, situations where companies lose a lot of money because of software problems. If a car manufacturer who runs a production line encounters an issue in the software and the you know, uh, the, the line stops 
producing cars, they often quote really high numbers in terms of loss that they accumulate, right? Um, and of course, you can sue, I don't know, the creators of NEOS for a problem in the, in the system um, because of the licenses that the open source syst systems use. Um, they often explicitly state that there is no liability included and no warranty. Um, but is that really the issue? Right? Um, is the problem that you need to sue someone to get some kind of, you know, payback um, because of the problem you had? Is that is that really the problem? Uh, I'm I'm not so sure. Right? Um, in most cases that that we see where um, open source software is used, um, I have to think about, of course, about the um, criticality of the system I'm building. And then I have to think about how much testing is needed, how stable the system needs to be. Um, and then, you know, I can get rid of a lot of situations beforehand and make sure that I invest the money necessary to um, not even get in a situation where the system breaks down and really um, causes big problems to the business. So this one, you know, could, could be a good reason for some companies. Um, and then there's um, then there's continuity. You've probably all heard that, right? Um, a question floating around: How long is this no Neos going to be there? Is it going to be abandoned in two years' time? Of course, my answer would be no. But you know, who knows? Um, and all of you have probably seen packages on GitHub um, that have been published at some point, but have not been maintained. They just sit there. We've heard it in the keynote as well. They rot, right? Uh, they get older. They're not supported anymore. Um, and that, of course, is an issue I have to look into and uh, that I have to keep in mind. Um, that's why all of the big um, repositories, for example, they show you how popular um, and how well man maintained open source software is. They show you how many people forked it or started or downloaded it so that you can assess how busy, how active the community is. Um, and when you look, for example, at something like Linux, which I showed you earlier in the Linux kernel, um, that's as active as any software development project gets, right? Um, so yes, continuity in that sense is something that I need to be aware of. Um, but again, if you look at paid software, um, there is no guarantee that a company continues developing a certain software forever, right? It's the same thing, really. Um, it's just that if there is a company producing a piece of software, you might be able to convince them with a big sum of money to continue developing it for you. Okay. So keep that in mind when, when looking at open source. Um, let's leave the problem space. Let's go into something more happy. What, how can you actually profit from using open source and contributing? And it's, um, that's the interesting part. So, um, when you when you start developing a project um, and you look at your architecture and what you want to build, and y you start to look at the options you have available. And the cool thing with open source is there are lots of options out there for every kind of problem that you want to tackle. Um, as I said, in, in software development, you have lots of open source databases, programming languages, frameworks. There's a ton of solutions for lots of specific problems. And you have the freedom to choose whichever you want, try them out, and if you're not happy, Throw them out again. Per se, there's no there's no lock in when you try something, right? When you have to buy a software, you already invested some money, and then you think, oh, okay, do I really want to switch again because I already spent that money? You think you think about sunk costs and stuff like that. Um, with open source, you invest time, and that's it at the beginning, most mostly. 
So for me, that's a big that's a big benefit. The other, or another big benefit, um, is security. Some, sometimes um, people look at open source software and say, "Okay, it's not done by professionals, and you know they they don't produce um, secure software. How how can they do that if if it if it's not you know if it's not paid software?" And from my perspective, it's actually the other way around. Um, if you've been in contact with Neos and Flow for a while, um, think back how many security-related releases did we have last year? Does anyone know? I think it's one a year or something. So we have an open source project which did like 70 releases of Neos and 70 releases of Flow, and one was related to security. So of course we have a pretty young system. Um, but because it's you know it's built from the ground up to be secure, and there's lots and lots of people looking at that, and and when they encounter a problem, you know there's an easy way to report that. There's a process, um, and the thing is, even with security audits that have been done, um, they were always you know very positive for Neos, um, and that's an opportunity you have with open source software, right? Um, it's not that open source software per se is secure. Of course, you know, if everybody's able to push out their software, there, there's good and bad software. But again, that's something that you can look into, that you can review, and you can choose the one that suits your needs. And the same goes for quality, right? Um, you have so many pairs of eyes being able to look at the code and talk about the code because it's not something that's that's somewhere and maybe there is this one guy at the company who understands how the code works and you know no one else is able to touch it and if there is a problem in that specific area of the software then you know maybe you get a response from support or not um in open source software, you can look at it, and if you're a developer, that's you know even easier for you than for me. Um, you just look at the code and try to understand what's the problem. And if you you know move from just using open source to cont contributing, when you found an issue, an issue, you can even open an you know open up an issue for a project, put in what you found, and as you have access to the code, um, you can provide really good you know, input for the developers, actually, um, and help make the software better. And when that, when that um, ecosystem starts to work and you have, you know, a certain number of people doing that, opening up issues, creating pull requests to improve the software, it, gets, it becomes a, a virtuous cycle, right? The quality starts to improve. And then you have a team of people, like we have here in the NEOS project, um, that's really, you know, that's really interested in good so quality software. Um, so they provide a framework to make it easy for others in the community to help improve that quality. Speed. Um, when you have paid software, the vendor may publish a roadmap or not, um, and they push out releases when they want or not, or if, you, you know, if you're a really, really big customer, you may be able to influence that. Um, with open source software, the cool thing is, um, as we've also heard in the keynote, um, when there's a critical bug that's identified, um, there's a big group of people able to bring out a release. And as we've seen with the React UI, for example, that was a really big change that was published. Um, and of course, that had some, you know, it was a beta release and it had some issues, but we were able to bring out new versions really, really, really quickly. Um, and a lot of people are able to contribute. Is it by sending in issues um, or actually by fixing stuff and then by creating releases and um, how we've done it with Neos is you re it, you know it's built into 
the software to be easy to be updated. So when we push out an, uh, a fix, you update your Neos installation, you don't need to touch anything, and then you know you already have the update available. And that can happen in a matter of you know hours. And that's a you know a real cool feature of open source uh, projects. So let's um, shift focus a little bit um, for the for the agency. Um, when you, as a developer or as a employee of an agency, um, contribute to an open source project. Um, and the open source project um, you know, works well, they will be happy for your contribution and they will give you the feedback that they are happy and that's something you know, that we are always trying to improve um, to keep people motivated and to you know, really make them feel welcome and feel they make their contributions feel welcome. And what that should do the other way around is make you feel valued, that your contribution really, really helps the project and that we are thankful for your, the time you've spent, for the effort you put in. Um, and that is something that helps the individual feel more fulfilled when we can reflect that thankfulness back for putting in your effort. Um, the feedback that we get from people that attend sprints, and I will show that a little bit later, um, is so positive um, that that's the spirit um, that we have here in the NEOS community. And that is something um, that is so much easier to do in an open source project because we are per se open. So we welcome contributions from the outside and it's so easy to contribute. Um, and it's really motivating for people. That's why I'm here today. That's why I spend so much of my um, private and company time on NEOS because it's really motivating for me. I feel you know, uh, helpful when I contribute to NEOS. The other, um, the other side for agencies is brand awareness. When you look at that, do you have an idea? Does a brand come to mind? Right? Okay. So um, when you look at a certain ecosystem, like Neos ecosystem, for example, you will see certain agency brands again and again and again because they're sponsoring, they're supporting, they're sending core team members, um, they're you know organizing sprints or other event events, um, and that of course creates a projection of that brand into the ecosystem. So when people look for agencies that provide services around NEOS, um, you know, it's very easy to find those companies. So that's a real tangible benefit for those agencies to contribute to open source. Um, the brand awareness that returns is really high. And of course, when a company invests in open source software and, op and contributes to open source projects, um, there is a big opportunity for growth because again, um, and I stress that point a little bit, um, it can be a virtuous cycle. You start contri contributing, people become aware that there is someone contributing um, because you don't do it anonymously, right? It's always attached to a name. Um, and people start, okay, you know, that, that agency is sending people to sprints, that agency is sponsoring an event. Let me have a look at that agency. What are they actually doing? Is it a cool place to work? Is it, you know, do they do cool projects? Um, and that, of course, enables the the agency to grow, to have real, tangible, economic benefits to do larger projects, to get, you know, uh, 
motivated employees, as I already said. Um, and really, it helps the agency to grow and it helps the project to grow. So it's a, it can be a win-win situation to invest in open source. And <laughs> for, for Sandstorm, for example, um, to give you a really um, a, f a feeling how that works, um, when we looked at where our projects come from, um, I think in 2016, 2017, like 90% of the projects we do come from the NEOS flow ecosystem, although they are not even all NEOS projects. So just because people are aware that we exist, um, what kind of you know, services we offer, what we do, um, and the contributions we provide to the NEOS and Flow ecosystem, and people can see the quality of those contributions, they think, okay, I have this project, I have this customer, maybe I talk to a company like Sandstorm in my case um, to do a certain project. And that really helped us grow in the last years. And that's something that I can only you know, recommend to everyone in the audience um, and everyone else um, to not let that opportunity slip through your fingers. All right. Um, I've talked a lot about software um, because that's just something that we're all aware of. Um, and that's the main topic of the conference today. Um, but there is more than just open source software. Um, for example, there's open source art. Um, you know, I, I tried to put the, um, what's it called? Attribution, thank you, um, for, the, for the images I downloaded from the internet. Um, so there's, you know, there's this website, Unsplash, um, where people upload their images for free and you can use them without any license. Um, and that's, you know, that's open source. You can, people put their work out there and when you download it, they say, hey, you know, you're free to use this in any context, but it would be cool if you, you know, show who it's from. And, and that's a really cool thing. Um, you are well aware that there's lots of paid um, stock image libraries out there, um, but there's this other side that's growing like crazy. Um, and there's, you know, one for images and then one for drawings and icons and, you know, that stuff is just spreading, right? Open source is growing everywhere. Um, there's not only art, there's also music um, with free music being created and being shared that you can use in different contexts um, that you can download. Um, the movement is also spreading from the software side to the hardware side. When we think of open hardware, um, it might be something like a, like a desk or a chair or something like that. Um, there's projects like opendesk.cc. Does anybody, has anybody heard about it? Um, it's a platform where designers upload um, plans to manufacture like you know, uh, a desk or something. Um, and what, what they try to do is um, they certify workshops that can produce the furniture. So when you want a, a table, for example, um, the platform recommends you to a workshop close to you. So they're trying to you know, reduce shipping um, distance. And then when you actually buy it, the designer that provided the, the actual design gets paid, the workshop gets paid, and the platform gets something from that. But the actual plans, they're available to download for free, right? So if you have a, um, a machine to manufacture that yourself, you can download the plans and do that. That's fine. Um, here's something called the Open Source Hardware Association. Um, they have a website where they list all kinds of um, hardware and that's you know open source where the plans to manufacture it, how it's made up, the documentation is available online and free. Um, you may have heard of um, Tesla's big announcement to make a lot of patents available to the public to 
promote and to allow others um, to use their inventions. And um, for example, there's a um, there's a glasses manufacturer in in the UK that's saying uh, that's creating an open source glass glasses. So um, that's that's developing and spreading. Um, there's open source biology. Um, there's companies, foundations, who say um, all of the work in healthcare and health science that the big corporations do, and by pet patenting their work, um, you know, they're creating a closed ecosystem. Um, so, in contrast to that, um, they're making their discoveries and their ideas open, so that you know, everybody can basically understand what are the building blocks of a certain, I don't know, bacteria that can do something. Um, and there's, there's networks um, that have made it their mission to, to provide open source um, biotechnology. And there's open food. Um, <laughs> it's really interesting when I googled that. Um, there's open source beer. Okay, what does that mean? <laughs> So um, it means that the recipe is open source, right? When you think of Coca-Cola or Pepsi or something, the, the recipe is their most guarded secret, um, kept in a safe somewhere, locked behind, I don't know what doors. And there's, I think it, it was in Australia or something, where they have an open source brewery where you can you know, look at what they're doing and the public is invited to help improve and use that um, product that they're making. Um, there's also Creative Commons recipe books, you know, like today it's really common to go into the bookstore and, and buy something or you go on the website and, you know, look at the recipes that are there and, and people are publishing recipe books um, as open source. So there's a lot of areas out there and that field is really, you know, outside of software, it's, it's really small but it's growing. So what's what can you do? Um, open source, as I already said, thrives and lives from the contributions that people put in. Right? It wouldn't work without the time that people spend. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, um, there's two types of contributions that you can provide. The first, of course, is quite easy, it's money, right? Um, every project needs from a certain point onward, like when, you, when it leaves your personal space, um, it needs some kind of funding to really be viable and uh, competitive. Uh, we couldn't do NEOs if we had, you know, if no company said, um, I'm spending some money on that. Um, so. Just to have it out of the way, I'm going to show you that slide for last time at this conference. Okay, you've seen that. Um, NEOS relies on the financial support um, that we get from companies. Um, so all the big open source projects have big foundations um, with who pr that provide funding to the projects. Um, so NEOS is you know, no special case there. Um, but much more important than money is time. Um, and I don't even want to dive into the philosophical, you know, time only flows in one direction and once it is spent, it cannot be recovered and all that. Um, that's no news to you. Um, and you're already doing a great job at attending an open source conference like the NEOS conference um, and any other event formats that, that exist, right? When you go to bar camps or meetups or all other kinds of events, um, you're part of the community. You're creating this network of information that helps open source projects thrive and grow and you know connecting with other people and spending your time diving deeper into an open source project into an open source community um for people like like me who's in the core team you know that's 
a really, really cool event here. Like seeing almost 200 people who are interested in NEOS, who spend two days of their time and money um, to come here, listen to what we have to say about the project. Um, that you know, makes me really, really happy. Thank you very much for being here. Um, from a NEOS perspective, sprints are a really good opportunity. Um, and from, from your perspective, there is very, very little risk involved. Like all you have to do is invest the time, maybe convince your company to sponsor some of that um, to come to a sprint. Why, why do I say there's really little risk involved? I've asked some first-time attendees at last week's sprint at Setgeist um, about their responses. And one of them said, one hour into the sprint, I was up and running working on a feature. So there was someone there who helped them get started. They weren't left on their own and have to figure out stuff. And you know, there's this group of people who knows each other and then I'm new. Hello, <laughs> this is awkward. Yeah, have a seat there and you know, we're working. So it, it's not like that. We're really happy about uh, people who join the sprints and we're open and thankful and help you be productive because that's the thing that scales. When we help you be productive, you know, you do something that's cool for the project, be that fixing a bug, updating the documentation, uh, developing a feature, helping us out with marketing or, or whatever. They said, I didn't have the feeling to keep someone from doing their work. So they didn't have the feeling that their you know, weight added to something or that they're interrupting people when they have questions or anything. Um, they said, I learned so much at this sprint, NEOS and non-NEOS related. So it's not just you know, that you code or something. Um, by talking to people, there's so much more you can take away, especially at the retro um, that we do twice a year at the moment. Um, their feedback was, the open team retro was really cool. You practice what you preach about onboarding. I feel so encouraged to contribute now. So that's an opportunity uh, for each and every one of you and an invitation. Join sprints. We announce them on our website. We announce them sometimes on our blog, um, on Twitter. Um, you know, just join us. Um, there's usually, there's a, um, a Slack channel called Next Sprint. So, you know, when you have a look there, the pin post should be about the next sprint. There is information in Discuss about who's organizing it and how long it will be with the doodle where you can sign up and everything. So that should be really easy to get into. Um, meetups are, are a good way to contribute to any open source project, really. Um, I checked, looking from Hamburg, for example, um, and there's you know, lots and lots and lots of uh, Neo CMS meetups, and they're not organized by the core team. They're organized by people in those cities who are interested in NEOS and want to you know, drive the project forward. So you could join one of those. Um, and even what's even more interesting, if you have something to say about NEOS, um, why not join another meetup like a JavaScript meetup or a PHP user group or something like that and, and say something about NEOS from a NEOS core team perspective um, that's a really as important aspect of marketing for the project to, to get more people you know, aware that NEOS exists and NEOS is a, is a cool system. When you c contribute code um, or marketing collateral or whatever, um, GitHub is the place to go. Um, there's tons of repositories, um, our brand, our website, everything is on GitHub. Um, that's the place where you, you know you create the issues and the pull requests that I mentioned. Um, I also mentioned Slack. Um, that's you know chat um, where the team uh, and the community really talks about everything. We try to keep like 99.9% .9 of conversations are open. Um, security conversations are not open to everyone because. You know, we're discussing security vulnerabilities, but as I mentioned, they're 
it's not so many of them. Um, and there's channels for you know every kind of purpose, like ongoing development projects, marketing, um, team channels that you can just openly view. You know, can see what the teams are actually doing. Transparency is a really important important topic. There's discuss. Um, that's our forum, right? So there's questions and answers. Um, there is information about events and inner workings of the NEOS team. Sometimes we publish information about processes and we um, also publish team meeting minutes um, and a lot of stuff. So discuss is a thing to remember. <coughs> and my final call to you, be brave. Show the world um, your work, show your work to the world. Um, you will receive thanks and recognition. It will help you grow personally. It will help your company grow. It will help the project grow. It's really a win-win-win situation when you contribute to open source. Thank you. <laughs>